of former British Army Colonel Hamish de Bretton Gordon. Uh, Hamish, allies have hit uh, 60 targets overnight. The uh, Yemenis Houthis uh, saying 73 uh, strikes. What targets, when we talk about a proportionate, limited and necessary response by the government, what were the targets? Well, good morning. The targets appear to be those uh, launch sites where the um, missiles are coming from and uh, also the drone sites, uh, which I expect you know, the British and Americans have pretty good intelligence over. They've been looking at this in great detail. And as you said, there is a pretty significant uh, naval force in the region. I think what is really important here that hopefully um, our government and the Americans have learned from the mistakes in Syria, where I spent 10 years trying to protect civilians there, you, everybody will remember the Obama red line when we, when Obama threatened Assad if he used chemical weapons, he'd be hit. When Assad killed 1,500 people in August 2013, we did nothing. It wasn't until April 2018 when Britain and America did surgical strikes, just like the ones we've seen overnight, that destroyed Assad's chemical weapons facilities and the chemical weapons stopped being used. So. Hopefully, as the Prime Minister and others have said, this is a, a one-off surgical strike to take down the Houthis' ability to attack shipping. I won't sort of go over the arguments you so clearly said, but, but the, the shipping has a direct impact on us here in the UK. It affects our economy. And of course, the Iranians have got their DNA all over this because they want to affect the West. They would like to see escalation in the Middle East. And we must make sure that, as we did overnight, we uh, make sure that the Houthis do not have the ability to attack these ships in future. It, they might require a few more attacks to do this, but I think um, the Houthis threatening us, um, as your defence correspondent said, they might be able to attack the shipping, try and attack some Navy ships, but their ability to do much more than that, I expect, is pretty limited. And, and the messaging from the UK is really crucial here. The UK junior defence minister, James Heapy, says there are no more UK missions immediately planned. He said that is an important point. He reiterates the fact this was limited, proportionate, it was necessary. Also, they're bit very clear to say this is part of an international coalition of 10 countries. This wasn't about the UK and the US taking, uh, taking the Houthis on on their own, it was much more part of a broader coalition, a consensus of countries. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think you know, the Australians were involved uh, and the Bahrainis as well. So, uh, yeah, this is not you know, US trying to flex its muscles. Uh, we must have free passage uh, on the high seas to enable global trade. I'm very disappointed we haven't heard anything from the Chinese yet. You know, most of this uh, most of these cargoes are, are, are Chinese material, uh, Chinese goods heading towards Western markets. Now, it's a Chinese economy that's going to suffer just as much as everybody else. And of course, China has, you know, the, the second most powerful military in the world, and they could do an awful lot to help out here. But they've been very much sitting on the sidelines, sort of twiddling their thumbs, as it were. But yeah, I hope uh, the Minister Heapy is absolutely right. It won't be required again, but the Houthis need to absolutely understand is, you know, if, if they start putting drones again and missiles into the sky, they will be taken out and the, the, the sites launching them will be neutralised. Um, Hamish, I just want to put to you the, the, the thoughts of one of our viewers, Albert, who says he was in the Navy for 27 years. So I understand the need to protect trade routes in the Red Sea. However, the way to stop Houthis was not by attacking a foreign nation where rebels were holding up. Now we will find ourselves in a large-scale military operation for which we are not currently equipped. There are many questions being raised, aren't there, about Britain's uh, military capabilities in this current day and age? Well, well, that's absolutely right. And again, you covered this earlier on. It is very true. I mean, the, the, the main threat to the UK at the moment is very much the war in Ukraine. And if Russia prevails there, I fear that we will be committed to fight the Russians in Europe. However, our military, uh, I, I was a tank commander, commanded the Royal Tank Regiment. Um, and uh, we, we now have barely, you know, 100 tanks. Uh, Russia has four and a half thousand. Uh, as you said, we can't cruise some of our naval ships. And uh, the, the spending on defence, although it's increased, is nowhere near it should do. 
I, th I think people in this country will, will really understand today from what's happened overnight and from watching the news about Ukraine that, that defence is, is key. I mean, it is the first duty of this government to defend this country. And um, one would argue at the moment whether we have the forces to do that. The situation has changed. People are so fixated at the moment with the election coming up here at the end of the year, with, with your cost of living and all the other dreadful things that are happening. But quite frankly, if we don't have the military to protect this country, everything else is, is horrifically irrelevant. Given the instability in this region, does it change our political priorities? And will the electorate understand that? Well, hopefully the electorate understand about global security and the security of this country. Hopefully people are watching what's happening in Ukraine, where we have uh, Russia um, invading another country and using all its resources to try and take that country and beyond, and a tyrannical leader leading it. Hopefully people realise in Iran, again, we have a tyrannical leadership who want to affect the West. And hopefully people will be seeing, you know, the dreadful things that are happening in Gaza and the potential to expand that. You know, the very fact when people go to the shops tomorrow and have to pay more for their goods that they're getting from China or there's 10p more on the price of fuel, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with what's happening in this country. It's all to do what's happening around the world. And, and Britain is part of that. You know, we might be a very small nation with a very small military but we are a key player on the world stage. And it's absolutely essential that our leaders do that. And uh, for the moment, at least, forget about their getting reelected in a few months time, that is irrelevant. What we must do is try and secure peace in, in Israel, secure peace in the Middle East, and get world trade moving again so that we can get on with the business and recover our economy. Hamish, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for your time. You've been getting in touch with your uh, views on the UK's military action overnight. Uh, Stephen said people who think the Red Sea crisis is not our problem should wait until inflation hits the UK. Fuel prices and costs will rise again just as they were easing. We did right by launching strikes against Houthi rebels. Beverly says the military action by the UK and the US was absolutely required. The entry and exit points of the Suez Canal are the pinch point in global shipping. Free passage is an essential. Uh, Cliff, though, has raised concerns. I fear we have just thrown a match into the Middle East box of fireworks. Escalation is a real possibility now, and we might get sucked in further. Uh, Chris makes a really important point. We heard this morning the Liberal Democrats, the SNP, Plaid Cymru, have demanded that Parliament is recalled to debate these strikes. Chris says our MPs and opposition should not question the UK's involvement in military strikes against the Houthi rebels. They took action against a terrorist group attacking British ships in the Middle East. And Rafiq, I think the world will suffer because of the actions by the UK and US in the Red Sea. Now wait until Houthi starts seeking, seeking revenge uh, for the attack. We know uh, that a statement from the Houthis uh, today talking about the UK and the US paying a heavy price.